Welcome to another TIBCO video tutorial. My name is Jason Semoliano from Smarter Incorporated. In today's tutorial, I'd like to teach you how to poll for changes in a file. In other words, how do we detect file changes such as the creation of a new file or the modification of an existing file or the deletion of an existing file? How do we use TIBCO Designer to detect file changes? So I'd like for you to follow along with me as we create this process definition that will do that. So let's move over to our TIBCO Designer tool. This is the Smarter TIBCO Tutorials project that was previously created for the previous tutorials we had. Inside the Business Process folder, right-click, select New Folder, and then let's rename this to Detect file changes inside the detect file changes folder right click select add resource process process definition rename the new process definition to detect file changes okay so let's double click on the detect file changes process definition we have the start and end activities Right click on a white space, add a resource, go to the file palette and select file polar. And I'll explain why we're doing this. As you can see, the file polar activity has been created while the start activity that was there before has been removed. The file polar activity replaced the start activity. And you'll notice that the file polar activity has this little icon here that looks like the previously removed start activity and what that means is that the file polar is a starter activity and that means that the file polar will be waiting for external events to happen before starting a new process instance in that case the file polar will, will be waiting for changes in a file that we will specify here later so we will just leave the file name at the activity name as file polar in the file name, I would like to detect changes in any files that start with PO in, in the C drive. So what I'm going to put, I'm going to specify C, and I'm going to say PO, and I'm going to use regular expression here, the asterisk symbol, to indicate what, it doesn't matter what happens after the PO as long as it starts with the PO and then I'm gonna say .txt so this is going to detect changes for or any files that, that start with a PO and ends with a .txt inside the C drive and then I'm going to change the polling interval I'm gonna make it shorter I'm gonna make it from 5 to 2 so that every 2 seconds it is looking to see if there are any changes in the in any of the files that start with PO and then I'm going to click apply and I'm going to move over to the advanced tab as you can see here by default the poll for create events poll for modify events and poll for delete events are checked that means this file polar will detect events such as the creation of a new file that starts with the PO and the modification of any files that are of similar sort and then the deletion of any files that start with PO in the mode, change this from files and directories to only files. You can also detect ch uh, directory changes, but in this case, we're only going to use, we're only going to detect changes in the PO files. So change that to only files, and then I'm going to leave everything as is. I'm going to click apply. And what I'm going to do, if there are any changes in the file, in any file that starts with PO, I'd like for it to be written into the business works log file. So how do we write something to the log file? So follow along with me, right click on a white space, select add resource, go to general activities, select the write to log activity. That inserts a write to log activity into your process. So let's go ahead and connect the activities from the file polar to the log from the log to the end. Go back to the normal cursor. In the log, 
in the write to log activity, we're going to go to the input tab and you'll notice that the message is read because it is a required field. So we need to put something there. So we're going to specify there what has taken place, whether it's been a create event or a modify event or a remove event. So I'm going to show you a new feature here. Go click on the, the message element and instead of just inputting in this little text box here, we're going to click on this pencil button here, which is the XPath Formula Builder, so that we will have more space to put in our input. And it's very nice. So click on this pencil. That brings forth the XPath Formula Builder. And what we're going to do, we're just going to specify, we're going to write something like create and then the, the file name or modify and then the file name or it's going to write remove and then the file name so whatever the event is we're going to specify that event and then the name of the file that was associated with the event so we'll need to concatenate strings in order to do that so how do we concatenate strings in Tibco Designer so in this XPath Formula Builder go to the functions tab in the string folder click on the concat function and when you click on it, you'll notice that there's some documentation here that teaches you how to use it. This one is very simple. Drag the concat over to the white space. And then that shows you the syntax of the concat function. So you'll, you can concatenate string and then string however many strings you want to concatenate. So in this case, we're going to concatenate the data coming from the file polar activity. So expand the file polar data. And we're going to concatenate the action. So drag that over to the string one. And then we're going to specify the file name. Drag that over to string two. Also, we're just going to add a space here so it looks nicer. And then at the end, at the end of this string, we're going to just put a period. So it also looks nice. It doesn't hurt to make your output looks ni look nice. So what we have here is concatenate the action, the space, and then the file name, and then a period. Let's click Apply and then close the XPath Formula Builder. Let's select all activities and make it look nice by clicking on the Align Top Sides button in the top. That aligns all of them. Let's deselect all the activities and let's click on this validate resource so that to make sure that we're ready to execute this process definition. Click on it and make sure that you get this tab, this dialog box here that says validation successful. So now we are ready to run this process definition. So I'm going to go to the tester and I'm going to click on the start and I'm going to say load and start current. That starts this detect file changes process definition, but it doesn't do anything. The reason why is because it's waiting for an external event. So let's give it an external event. Follow along with me and let's go to the C drive. Remember, this file polar is going to be waiting for any file changes in the C drive, any file that starts with PO. So go to your C drive and let's create a new file, a text document. Let's call it PO and let's call it 123.txt and it'll only look, it, it doesn't care about the 123 because it only cares about the PO because remember we use regular expression there PO asterisk so it doesn't matter what comes after PO as long as it starts with PO and then ends with txt so let's create that, I'm gonna press enter let's take a look at what happens in our typical designer you'll notice that a new process instance has been created so very good, it works because the file starts with PO and ends with TX.txt. So it also wrote to the log. Let's take a look at the log. The way to do that is you go to the Windows, the window menu, select Show Console, go to the very bottom, and you'll notice it says create PO123.txt. Excellent. I encourage you in your own time to also see what happens if when you modify that PO123.txt file and also what happens when you delete it. What's, what should happen is that you should have a second and a third process definition, process instance that will be created 
once you do any modifications or deletion of the of any file that starts with PO and ends with .txt in your C drive. So that is how you use a file polar. It detects changes in a file. We have a mission accomplished in our video tutorial today. Again, thank you so much for your support, for your supportive comments. I really appreciate it, and thank you for continuing to watch these tutorials. Stay tuned for more tutorials to come. For now, this is Jason Semeliano from Smarter Incorporated. I thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.